Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes. Finest kind. Uh, I have been having trouble all week with my uh, with the Zoom meetings, and I think it has to do with the fact that I am I wasn't allowing enough time. In other words, I was just letting it set for the meeting time that Zoom gave me, and uh, it was cutting off at an hour. It was cutting off my speech, and I couldn't get it back on. So let's hope everything is fine. Uh, all right, let's see. Nope, that's not it. It's not the correct thing. Okay, I got... No, don't do this to me. Sorry. Nope, that's not. There it is. Sorry, trying to find my thing. Uh, I did, yeah, I see you in here. Here. Okay, I've only got five people in here. Car Carson. I'm here. Uh, Charlie. Here. James. Max is in here. Here. Okay, so that's what I got, guys. Uh, that's what I got. All right. Um, actually, the meeting last night, the Zoom meeting last night, took an hour, but that was only because I spent a half an hour talking to somebody about the density lab. So this should be very, very easy, extremely uh, easy for you, okay? The calculations are super, super simple. All right? Uh, professor, I have, um, I don't know if, I, I don't know if it was the same issue. I mean, I don't know if um, someone else had a similar issue to me, but I, uh, when I went to submit my, like when you take the pictures of your lab manual and send them in, I, I finished that around, I think, 10 p.m. last night, a couple hours before the due date. And it kept saying like, um, like it was like, like the page would, could not be like found or like it was unauthorized. So I like kept redoing it. Like I kept um, going, like going way through all the, the SP college and everything and it wasn't uh -huh. working uh -huh. I didn't know if anyone else had a similar issue, but I just thought I'd Open bring it, it up. up. Open it up. Did anybody else have an issue? I submitted mine around the same time. I didn't have an issue at all. Okay, so it, it could have been just my could be the way. Uh, are you using Google Chrome? Yes. Uh, it, because it doesn't like anything. It doesn't like anything but that. Okay? It, it could have very well been my internet i don't i'm not sure i tried to reset everything but i had i had it like done and everything i don't know if you might have even gotten a submission for it but it didn't say it did so i was kind of really confused all uh, right let me see what i got okay um no problem. let me see if i'm eve i'm gonna stop share for a second i'm gonna see where i believe i have the course called up okay carson All right, that was densities, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, Carson, I don't have something from you. That's that's very weird. Okay. Um, All right. What I'm going to do? I, I, I said somebody didn't have. Troubles with it? No, I completely understand. I, it might have been no, my no, internet. I, I'm going to try and I'm going to try and get you special dispensation, so you can at least try it again. I'll definitely try it again. Uh, I'll I'll make sure my internet's. It's good not it's, the file. Carson. I'm not that concerned about the notebook, because eventually, guys. Right now, I, I don't know if you noticed, I, I'm grading the notebook fairly harshly right now. And that's because I want you to get me to, I want you to be able to do 
a notebook in my format correctly. Once you do that, all your bad grades are gonna go away. Like if I gave you threes and fives on this notebook, once you give me a good notebook, I'll go ahead and upgrade all those threes and fives to nines at that point. Then it's just a matter of maintaining the, the, the notebook at that point. Okay, does that make sense, guys? Yes, sir. Yeah, it does. The notebook is meant to help you. Yeah, I spent, I spent a considerable amount of time trying to make sure those mistakes I made on the first one were fixed and, and, and a little bit better. Okay, what I'm going to do, Carson, I'm, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm probably not going to get to this. I probably won't even get to it on Friday. Probably get to it next Monday. So I'm going to give you until 5 p.m. on Friday. Please email me. I'm going to be in and out of the in and out of my house today. I have a doctor's appointment. And in addition to that, I've got a test going on. And these people, it's they're intro people, so they're not used to honor lock. So I'm sure I'm going to get lots of calls, especially in the evening. So I'm very sure I'm not going to get to the notebooks today. Um, no problem. So I've got it, I've got it listed till 5 p.m. tomorrow. Fair enough. No problem. Yep, I'll submit it after this. Hopefully it'll work. Maybe it was just the time or something. I have no I, clue. I, I don't know. I'm, you're hearing what I'm hearing, Carson. Somebody else did it about the same time and they had no problem. Okay, thank All you right. very much. Okay, guys, let's get on with this. All right. Anybody, does anybody have anything, anything that they are concerned about in lecture? Where, where are you in lecture at this point? Anybody? Or, orbital levels and so ionization are, energy. Okay, so you are doing periodic trends and you are doing, are you doing quantum mechanics, Max? Yeah. Yeah, we okay. did that last week and now we're on chapter nine. All right, it's again, I think I told you last week that different people uh, organize it a little bit differently. Okay. I was going to say, we're on chapter four. Which, which is, yeah. I, I, don't I know wish chapters. we were on chapter four. What is chapter with, four? With Warden, I honestly, I'm on chapter two, but the class is on chapter four. So. Uh, I'd have to look it up. I have no clue as to what chapter four is even. Uh, you're on reactions. Ooh, wee. Charlie, things could go, things are going to go downhill very rapidly. If you don't keep up with this, I'm sorry, because right now they, they, he's already been through naming. I'm taking it right. Has he talked about nomenclature? Uh, no. No? I feel like that's intro work, isn't it? It is intro, but we kind of mentioned it a little bit here. At least I do. Okay? Okay. But it's going to go, it, it will rapidly get away from you if you don't keep up with it. I'm, I'm just being honest, okay? Anybody yeah. else? I'm sorry, go ahead, Charlie. No, I'm just saying I understand. Thank you. Anybody else have anything else about lecture that they want, to, any concerns they want to bring up? Anything you're not understanding? Okay, you don't trust me yet. I can see that. I just don't get it. I don't know what I don't know. So it's like, I don't even know what to ask. <sighs> okay. Think of it this way, Max. When you're dealing with the periodic trends, all right, think about how many protons are sitting in the center, right? As you go from left to right, don't you have more protons in the center? Okay, that's more yep. positive power, right? So if you have more positive power, do you think it's gonna be harder to take an electron away or easier? Um, you have more positive power. Uh, are 10 protons gonna hold on to one electron more than three electron, or three protons? I believe so. It just makes sense, right? You got 10 pluses in there. 
they're going to hold on to an electron. So if you can hold on to an electron more with 10, that means that neon, it's going to be harder to pull an electron off a of neon than it will be for lithium that only has three. So as you go from left to right across the periodic table, it gets harder to pull an electron off. It takes more energy. The ionization energy goes up. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, I guess what I don't understand is like uh, ions and like where they pull or lose electrons from. Outermost shell. Yeah, does but he... like sometimes, sometimes it'll be like, uh, I'm just trying to think of like, Okay, maybe you're in, talking in the, chromium. Uh, the period of like four or something. All right. When you start getting the into the D orbitals. Do you, yes. Do you have your periodic table that close to you? Yeah, I'm pulling it. Guys, I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind my spending time like this. Uh, obviously, Max, you're shaking your head. Obviously, you don't mind. I'm trying to help you here. Yeah, I love it. Look I'm, at, I'm in the same, I'm in the same class. Chrom All right, guys, uh, I'm sorry, this is Carson. Look at your periodic table. Right now, I want you to count from scandium over to chromium. You have how many orbitals in the D and the D orbital? Say the elements again. That, I'm talking that the we're talking the period four. Go over. We're talking scandium. Okay. Go over scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium. Four. Correct. So there should be four electrons in the D orbital, right? I'm sorry, Samar just said something in the chat room. Somebody tell me what he said because I don't have access to the chat room. Ah. Okay, never mind. Not important. Okay, so it has four electrons in the D orbital. You have to understand there is an exception to putting everything in the S orbital first, then the D orbital. And that is atoms like half filled orbitals and they like fully filled orbitals, okay? So when we're dealing with chromium, we add a little bit of extra stability if we take one of those S electrons and put it in the D. So instead of having 4s2, 3d4, you have 4s1, 3d5, because you have two half-filled shells. And the thing is, the 3d orbital is very close to the 4s. It's only a matter of happenstance that the 4s supersedes the 3d. Those are orbitals are very, very close together, so it's easy to promote something from the 4s to the 3d. Does that make sense to you? No, but I, I understand that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, Max, Max, if it's you're not fine. under, like, I don't Max, want to take up too much time. Max, if you if you if you're not understanding that, then just understand. Look at chromium, molybdenum, tungsten, and don't even bother about 106. Just deal with chromium, molybdenum, and tungsten. Okay. If you if you're not understanding, you're not grabbing it like that, then understand this. All three of those will promote one electron from the S orbital into the D. Okay. Now let's look at copper, silver, and gold. Those three are very close to filling that D orbital. Okay. And it's more energetically sound to promote one of the S orbitals into the D so you end up with S1 D to the 10. So if you're looking at copper, silver, or gold, what you're going to do is you're going to promote one electron from the S orbital into the D so you now have a fully filled D orbital. Okay, that makes sense. So they prefer either half filled or, or if, if possible. Yes. Yes. 
that makes sense. I mean, I, he, I'm sure he went over this in class. I'm sure yeah, he went he over. Yeah, he did. It just didn't click for me. So. All right. It's not. Good but enough. No. I'm sorry, Thank Max. You. I'm not hearing you. Oh, I was just saying the way you put it, um, like he went over it in class, but the way you put it just now, that makes with the um, copper, silver, and gold example made a little bit more sense. And technically speaking, the F orbitals will do the same thing. Okay. But I've never seen anybody as bold as to, as to talk about europium and American. The point is those things are so fragile that they break up before you can even determine where the electrons are going. Okay. Anyway, okay, now some people have just come in. So I'm gonna go look at that. And you guys are lucky because I've been talking. And I haven't really gotten into the lab yet. James is here. Max is here. Samir is here. Is it Samir or Samir? Uh, Samir. Samir, sorry. Right now, I put S A M I R R O R, so I know it's to pr pronounce it right. Okay, Samir. All right, all right, guys. Really and truly, as I said, there's really nothing to this. Uh, are you seeing the screen? Are you seeing the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Has anybody ever seen those little packets when you buy shoes? Those little packets that basically say silicates? Yep. Anybody know why? Why they put those in there? Help with like moisture, absorb, absorb moisture. Absolutely. Those little packets are what, what are called desiccants. What a desiccant does is it sucks water out of the out of the atmosphere. And the compounds that do that are compounds that are called hydrates. And what happens with a hydrate is these salts, when they're making their crystalline structure, incorporate water into that structure. Now you gotta understand the water is not really bonded to the salt. It's just incorporated into that crystalline structure. And so what you can do is you can heat that salt up. If you heat that salt up and drive all the water away from it, you make something called an anhydrous salt, which is very, very good for putting in with shoes because if there's water around, the water is more likely to be sucked up by these anhydrous compounds than it is the leather, okay? Now, when, I'm sorry, before I go on, before what happens when these, the water molecules get incorporated, they get incorporated as a molar ratio. So you can't have half a water molecule in the crystalline structure. You have to have an integer number. So it has to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seen them up as high as 12 or so. So this is the ratio of water molecules to the salt molecules. So what we have to understand right now is something called mass percent. And a mass percent is nothing more than determination, determination of how much the part makes up of the whole. If we're doing percent, then what we're equating the whole to be is 100. And we have to say how many parts of that 100 is the part that we are looking for. So if we say percent, that's the we're setting the whole portion equal to 100 and just determining how much of the 100 is the portion we're interested in.
That is percent. If we were dealing with a million, then we would be dealing with parts per million as opposed to parts per century or parts per hundred. We good with that? Come on, I need some feedback. We understanding this part? Yes. Early? Yes. So now, okay. So simply, simply speaking, a mass percent is simply you take the part you're interested in, divide it by the whole, and multiply it by a hundred. We good there? Yes. All right. There are two means by which you can get mass percent of a compound. You can literally weigh the mass of your part and you can weigh the mass of the whole and just divide the mass of the part by the mass of the whole, you get a mass percent. You accomplish the same thing if you look at the molecular formula of your compound. What you do is you take the atomic masses of the part you're interested in. You add them all together. Then you take the atomic masses of the entire molecule, add those all together. And you divide the atomic masses of the part by the atomic masses of the whole, you have the mass percent. These two things are equal to each other. So if you have a molecular formula and you have the weight of the whole of your substance, you can determine what the weight of your part is because you know what the formula is. The formula can be converted to a mass percent. Then you just multiply the mass percent by the whole grams that you're looking at. Again, is this making sense to you? Yeah. I'm talking, I'm literally talking word problems at this point. So in the experimental part of what we're doing, all right, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna weigh out a crucible. Then you're gonna put some hydrate into it. And remember, the hydrate is the compound with the water. To get the weight of the hydrate, you just simply subtract the mass of the crucible and hydrate and the mass of the crucible, you get the weight of the hydrate. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that crucible and we are gonna heat it to drive all of the water away. Okay, we're gonna heat it at least twice. We're gonna heat it, cool it, then we're gonna heat it again, okay? The first mass is the weight after cooling, after the first heating. The second mass is the weight after cooling, after the second heating. Now, I got a significant weight difference here, don't I? 0.1 grams. That's pretty significant. So because it's a significant amount, I don't know whether I heated it enough to drive all the water off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat it a third time. The third time I heat it, I have a, a difference of 0.025 grams. That's fairly close to one another. So since it's fairly close to one another, I know that I've probably driven off all the water. So I now have the weight of the crucible and the salt after heating or the salt without water. The salt without water is called the anhydrous salt. I know what the weight of the crucible is. I subtract the mass of the salt after heating from, I subtract the crucible from the mass of the crucible and the salt after heating. This gives me the mass of my anhydrous sample. Now, can anybody suggest how we're gonna get the weight of the water?
Charlie, you're muted. There we go. Simply subtracting the, the original weight of the anhyd or the salt from the anhydrous salt at the end. That's simply simply put. That's all we got to do. The hydrate is the weight with water. The anhydrous is the weight without water. So all I have to do is take the hydrate and subtract the anhydrous. That will give me the mass of the water. Similarly, though, guys, if I have the mass of the crucible and the hydrate and the mass of the crucible and the anhydrous, I can subtract two and I'm going to get the same number. So there are two choices to do this. Either way will work. All right. Now I have the mass of my water. That's my part. Okay. That is my part. What is the weight of my hole? One point three two two. No. Yeah. When you write, Charlie, be quiet. After you write, be quiet. All right. Noted. Okay. The hydrate is the weight of the salt with water. So that is the whole weight of your compound. So all we're going to do simply now is take the mass of our water divided by the mass of our hydrate, multiply by 100%. We have the mass percent of water within our hydrate. Any questions there, guys? Told you this was going to be simple. Now, the whole object for this experiment is to determine which formula of five is the unknown material. And remember I said, we can determine mass percents two ways. If we have the formula, we can use the atomic masses to get the percent water in that formula. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those five formulas, figure out the percent of water in each of those five, and we're gonna compare it to the experimental result you got. When we compare it to the experimental result, if the mass percents match, then that's the formula of our unknown. Does that make sense to you all? So what we're yeah. gonna do, we're gonna use, we're gonna get our mass percent using atomic masses. If I want to determine whether my compound could be barium sulfate dot five waters, I need to determine the contribution from water within this molecular formula using the atomic masses. Then once I've done that, I'm gonna compare it to the result I got from my experiment. If they match, then that's the formula. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna first figure out what the mass of my water is. The formula says that there are five waters in the molecule. So I'm gonna to have to take five water molecules. This means I got 10 hydrogen atoms. So 10 times the atomic weight gives me 10.08 grams contributed by hydrogen. I've got five oxygen atoms. Five times 16 gives me 80. This means when I add the two up, the weight of the water is 90.08 grams. That's water's contribution. Now I got to figure out how much barium sulfate contributes. So I'm going to take my barium. There's one of them there. Multiply that by the atomic weight. There's one sulfur. Multiply that by sulfur's atomic weight. There are four oxygens. So I take four times 16 gives me 64. I add all of those up. That gives me a contribution from the barium sulfate of 233.39. To get the whole weight, I just add in the mass of the water. That gives me the whole weight for the barium sulfate dot 5 H2O, the whole molecular mass is 323.47. Again, all I do is multiply or divide 
the weight of my water by the weight of the whole thing and multiply it by 100, I get 27.85%. Coincidentally, that happens to match the result I got from my experiment. So I know that the formula of my unknown is barium sulfate dot five H2Os. Told you this was gonna be simple. We won't have to calculate a molecular formula from the percent that we got, will we? You can't. You can't, unless, okay, Charlie, you can do it if you know what the salt is. Okay. For example, if you if you know Okay, is that the question you're asking, Charlie? Again, you're muted. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, crap, I hate when this does this. Oh, I know what I did. I have no idea why this does this sometimes. Okay, say we have And we know we have barium, okay? We wanna know what the hydrate formula is, right? You can do this very easily. Right now, you know the molecular weight We figured that out by doing this, right? Yeah. So, so we have, okay, I was off. I was off by one, two things. So we know the molecular weight of barium sulfate is 233.39. All right. This is, what's this the mass percent of? Water. Water. So what is the mass percent of the barium. If the mass percent of the water is 27.85, guys, help me out here. Let's get out of here quick. Like 72.15. <laughs> Does that make sense to you all? Yeah. Now we can set up a simple equation. 72.15% of X is equal to 233.39. And this turns out to be 90.08. By the way, do you guys know how to do percentages like this? Is there anybody that does not, please don't be embarrassed. Is there anybody that does not know how to do percentages? What do you mean? Okay, to solve this problem for X, 72.15% of X equals 233. Do you know how to do that, Max? Yeah. Uh, do you do times 0.7215? And then you'd have to subtract the difference, nope. right? Nope. You divide. No, but like once you do 0. 0.7215 times 233, you would get a large number and then you'd subtract that no. from 233. Uh, yeah, yes. Sorry, Max, you are you are a step ahead of me. <laughs> Sorry. 
Okay, you're right. This is not 90.08. This is, sorry. 323.48. Thank you. This is what happens when I ad lib, guys. I make little mistakes. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm dividing here. which is equal to uh, uh, 323.48, right? Next step, I take 323.48. That's the weight of my whole, that's the weight of my hydrate. I subtract the weight of my, of my salt or the anhydrous portion. And this gives me 90.08 grams to determine how many moles I have. I multiply by one mole divided by 18.02. I think it's two. And this gives me around five. So yes, Charlie. You can't, that is a legitimate question. You can tell me what the mass percent of water is in a hydrate and give me the empirical formula of the hydrate. And yes, you can determine that the formula is now this, okay? Good question, Charlie. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Are the calculations seeming pretty easy? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go through it real quick. Real quick, I'm going to go through the... Uh, stop share. I'm going to go through the... Nope, that's not what I want. There's what I want. Okay. Gonna go into course content. Now, please guys, please, please, please. When you are going, when you are going to do this and you put in the video, yes, there is a video for density. For, I don't want densities, I want hydrate. Yes, there's going to be a video, video per percent composition. Yes, there is a video. Do not use the data from the video. That is the wrong data, okay? Please go down. When you're going in and accessing your data, go down the modules right after the last lab, right after Vesper is the student data for lab. Then you got to go back up again, click on it, and there's your entire data that you need. Okay, fair enough. This is the data I want you to use. All right, quickly, we're gonna go up into, nope, I want table contents again. All right. We're going to go into the results section. Preview. Let's 
Start quiz. Super, super easy, guys. The only thing you can screw up are sig figs, measurement readings, but you've already got the measurements, so you're not going to even screw those up. All right. Calculate the mass of the hydrate. He's even telling you what to do. Mass of the crucible and hydrate minus mass of the crucible. Make sure that your sig figs are right here. Then you're going to do the same thing for the anhydrous salt. Then you're going to calculate the mass of water in the hydrate. Simply subtract the result from B from the result from A. You will get the weight of the water. All right, percentage of water in the hydrate. All you're going to have to do is uh, you're going to have to do, you're going to have to show trial one. Then you're going to have to do trial two. I want to see, I want to see how you calculated the averages, okay? Because if, if I don't see, if, you, if your numbers are way off, that means I know that you did the second calculation incorrectly. So show me the trial one value plus trial two value divided by two. I need to see that average. All right. Now, you're given five choices here. What you have to do is you have to use the atomic masses to figure out what the percent water is in each one of these compounds. It's going to match one of these five numbers. And if you think 43.86% is the zinc compound, you go over here, zinc compounds number four, you put four in there. So you are going to have the four percentages of the five percentages of these five compounds. Now, simply, you got a result for this, your average percentage. Okay, you got a percent for that. Match it up to one of these five numbers, the closest one, and that will be your formula. Easy peasy, right? No, say that again. Okay. All right, Max, do you see that by using the weights, you figured out an average of the water percentage for the trials, right? Yeah. All right. So that's going to give you a percentage. That percentage is going to match one of these five. You've just, by doing the mass percent of the formulas, you've determined what the percent water in each of these is. Match one of these numbers to the uh, percent you got by actually doing the weights. And whatever formula you've identified it as, that will be the identity of your unknown. Okay, so the unknown is one of those empirical formulas there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Any questions about this? Any questions about the results section? I'm really expecting a whole bunch of 90s from this. I expect to go through these like this. I'm expecting to go through saying right answer, right answer, right answer. So I'm not going to have to write any comments, which slows me down. So if we're, not, if we're good with this, I'm going to get out of here. Question. So what are we specifically putting into number five? The actual formula. Okay, Samir, if you determine from your percent mass of water, if you determine that it is 14.75%, uh, okay? In question four, each one of these formulas, you're going to turn into a percent water. And that percent water is going to be one of these numbers. If you don't get one of these numbers for percent water, I would go through and do the calculation again because you're probably wrong. So let's say you identify magnesium as being 14% water. So that's going to be three. Your magnesium is your 14%. 
So when you did your calculation up here with actually doing the masses, you came up with the number. It may not be exactly 14.75. It may be something like 14.62. Okay, Samir? So that's pretty close to 14.75, right? So you know that since you identified 14.75% water is the mag sulfate dot seven H2O in the next, the identity of your unknown, you put mag sulfate dot seven H2O and you're good. Make sense? Any other questions, guys? Yeah, can we go over like what exactly is going in the lab notebook? Because when I did that for the last one, I got to it and I was I like, will, Max, I will, I will go through, I'll show you. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go to the post lab. Okay. Then oh, I, will yeah, go sure. through, I will go through the notebook. Okay. Okay. I want post lab. No, I don't want that. Why do computers do what you tell them to do rather than what you want them to do? Start quiz. Okay. First couple of questions I'm going to comment about. Uh, you should put a percent error. You should put a percent error into this conclusion of this notebook. They're giving you the percent error. You're going to know what the true value should be. The true value is one of those five numbers that were in the percentages that you determined by atomic mass. That is the correct answer. That is the known percentage. The experimental percentage is the result you got from weighing the stuff, heating it up and weighing the stuff. So that is gonna be your experimental value to get the percent error, take experimental minus known divided by known times 100. And he th gives you the experimental result and he gives you the known result. Remember, when you're answering the question here, this, these straight lines mean absolute value. So your answer is always going to be a positive number. Questions about this question? So everything we need to answer that question is right there. We don't need to refer to the results. Correct. Okay. You are answering this question based upon these two numbers. Okay, question two. Okay. Accuracy means getting the same answer over and over. It means replicating the answer experimentally. If you are supposed to get the same answer, then it is a means of determining how you were able to replicate that number. Mass percents, the percentage of water isn't changing. You're not changing the number in front of the H2O when we are dealing with the hydrate. That number is not changing. Every time we do this experiment, we should get the same result, okay? That's what preciseness is. Accuracy is, did we get the right result, okay? The known value of a hydrate is supposed to be 18.67. The results you got were these three numbers, okay? Now you got to ask yourself, were you able to get the same number over and over again? Yeah. So were you precise? No. Max. 
Precision yeah. is being able to get the same result over and over again. Oh, you just said accuracy was that. I'm sorry, did I say accuracy? Did I say, if I said accuracy, I'm sorry. I, oh, meant okay. to say, I meant to say precise. Are these numbers precise? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, are they close to the correct answer? No. No. So they're precise, but not accurate. These two concepts are very, very, are, are very, very not connected to one another. You can have something that's accurate, but not precise. Okay. Say you had, you're shooting an arrow at a target and you managed to shoot one arrow exactly five inches directly above the target five inches and a little bit away to the left, five inches and a little bit away to the right, okay? You've shot three arrows. Were you accurate? No, because you would have more of a grouping in one How spot, would you, right? Okay, Max, if you have three results, how would you tell how close that was to the real result? What would you have to do first? Uh, Anybody out there? You have three results. How do you compare those three results to an actual answer? You obtain the percent error for each one. You could do that. But what's an easier way? You have three results. What are the true, what's the true value? Let's look at these three. What's the true value that you came up with for these three results? What would you report your percent mass percent as? You have three results, 25.72, 25.73, and 25.74. What would you report your answer yeah. as? Get the average of all those. There so we go. 5.73. You get the average, and then you compare the average to the real answer, OK? So when we have those three arrows, if we average those three arrows, don't we get a point that's in the target? Don't we get that? Yeah. So that's an instance of being accurate, but not precise. All right. If when I'm shooting my arrows, I shoot three arrows that if you're on a dartboard, instead of hitting the, that's better. I should, should probably use that more. I throw my three darts and instead of going in the center, they all three of them go in the double, double block of the 20. Was I precise? Yeah. But was I accurate? Well, it depends on what, isn't the accuracy relative? Like what, what if you were trying to hit the doubles? You're trying to hit the target. You're trying to hit the center. Isn't the target the whole board or are you talking about the bullseye? No, I'm talking, I'm talking about right now, when you were doing this, Max, you were trying to hit the center okay, of the dartboard. Yeah, that makes then sense. Then we are precise, but we are not accurate. In order to be precise and accurate, we have to have all three darts in the little red circle. Okay? I'm gonna warn you, these numbers change. I was just looking at these yesterday and the result that I had showed something that was not accurate and not precise. So just a fair warning, these numbers are going to change. The last part of this, the next, next four questions, I believe, three, four, five, and six, and seven. They all follow, they all follow exactly what we did in the experiment. They're just giving you new numbers 
and you have to determine ultimately what the percentage is uh, or what the formula is. What the formula is for the hydrate. Okay. Questions on the post lab. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Max has requested I go through the notebook and I am happy to do that. Uh, I may, I'm going to have to, if I tell me, please, if you're not seeing something, because sometimes the bar on the right goes away for me. And I have to reload the course. And it may take me a few minutes to locate this. All righty, course content. Okay, Max. If you go all the way down, I think it's called instruction no instructor notes. If you go all the way down to instructor notes, click on it. Then you got to go all the way back. All right. If during the first week, the safety, uh, the safety and orientation week, I went through this PowerPoint. So I went through and now let me go. I went through and described what each section, what I want from that. Hold on a second. I'm giving a test. I got to make sure that nobody's panicking. Hello, it's Mr. Popovich. Hello? I'm sorry. What's this regard to? I'm teaching a class right now. Now, what is involved? Have they solved you a time? Yeah, right. Okay, I'll waste your time later. All right. The objective portion. All I want is a simple declarative statement about what you what you intend to accomplish. Charlie, what are you what are you doing in, in this hydrate experiment? What are we determining? Uh, let's go. The percentage with... of water in whatever compound we're working with. Okay, that would work for me. Uh, or to be even more specific, determination of a empirical formula through a mass percent study. Either way, either way would work. I just need a simple statement about what you're doing. Now. You have to talk about the chemical hazards. For this experiment, it's one of those five compounds, okay? So you have five, five possibilities for chemical hazards. In order to determine the chemical hazards, you gotta Google, put SDS, that stands for safety data sheet, and type in the name of the chemical. Now, when you're dealing with the name of the chemical, all you have to do is type in the salt portion. The hydrate doesn't, mean, doesn't make it any different from the salt. The salt is the dangerous part. You got to give me, you got you to uh, uh, abbreviate the long-term and immediate hazards and put them into your notebook. I want them handwritten. I don't want you cutting and pasting these things. If I look at lead nitrate, this is what I would get in a typical, uh, typical SDS sheet for, uh, for short-term hazards. So basically kind of read this and give me a synopsis. It can cause iron skin irritation, lead poisoning, 
can cause this stuff or it can have toxic effects in blood forming organs. Then you go down and later on, there will be something listing for long-term effects. Can cause this stuff, affects reproduction, unborn fetuses and mental development. So that's all I'm looking for. I'm looking for you to give me the highlights of the bad effects of the chemicals. And the whole reason for this is I want you to be aware of how to use the SDS sheets so that you know how to keep yourselves safe. Next step, I want you to do a step-by-step -step explanation of how you are going to do the experiment. The, experiment, the procedures should be detailed enough so that somebody, I could grab somebody off the street, hand them your procedures, and they should be able to replicate the experiment. This happens to be for next week, empirical formula. This is all you're going to do next week. Normally speaking, they won't be this long. That just happens to be what this experiment is. Next, you have a data table. You are going to be collecting data and you are going to be inputting the results of your calculations into a data table. You can copy the table that's in the lab handout. You can copy that. But if you do copy it and write into it, you need to permanently impress that into your notebook. Staple, paste, glue, tape. It has to be permanently adhered to the notebook. If it's in loose leaf form, it does not count. Do not include calculations within this data page. It makes things very, very confusing. So you're going to have a data, data table section and the next section you're gonna have are the calculations. One calculation, birth to death. You're gonna show me in, in the hydrate lab. You're gonna show me how you calculated the weight of the hydrate. You're gonna show me how you calculated the weight of the anhydrous salt. You're going to show me how you calculated the weight of water. You're going to show me the weight mass percent of water in the compound. Then you are going to show me the mass percent from the empirical formula of at least the correct sample, the correct formula. You only have to do that once. Next section are the conclusions. First statement of the, of the objective is, you said you were going to find the, find the mass percent. That was your objective. So your first statement of the conclusion should be the mass percent of my unknown was blank. Then you have to go into an error analysis, okay? State a possible error. And I'll, I'll get into this. I'm going to show you a, a I'm going to show you an example in a second or two, an example of a notebook, and I'll get into this. Basically, how could your experiment have gone wrong? All right. Say you misweighed your hydrate or your, your hydrate low. Okay. If you misweighed your hydrate low, hydrate and crucible low, this meant that when you subtracted the hydrate from the, and the anhydrous, that you were gonna get a smaller amount of water than you should have. If you got a smaller amount of water than you should have, this is gonna make your mass percent of water lower than it should be. That's what I mean. State how, state how an error could have occurred. Then you got to analyze how it would have ultimately affected your results. Uh, then 
you're getting into a conclusion. You know what the right answer should be because it's one of those five numbers. So that's going to be the expected value. Okay? That is going to be the value you expect. The actual value is the value you got experimentally. When you did, when you did the, the uh, uh, weights, when you did the weights, that should be your actual value in this experiment. Your expected value should be the amount that you got by doing the atomic masses. So that's what I want, Max. Okay. All right. Thank you. Wait, wait a second. Also in here, if we go to the same page, you hit exemplar notebook. Now I apologize about this because one of the pages is out of order here. The second page should be the first page. And you're lucky, luckily enough, this is the, this is this experiment. Okay. That's what I have for my objective. My compounds, mag sulfate is Epsom salt. So it's not going to be very hazardous to you. I went through and did all five. This is all I'm asking for. I'm not asking for you to write the entire thing. Just give me the highlights of what the hazards are. Okay, we got the hazards. Then we go into the procedures. And literally speaking, there's not much to this lab. There's only six, I have it as six steps. Then I go in and I do my data table, fill out my data table. And my next section are calculations. My results, the mass percent of my sample was this, which compares favorably with this. Error analysis, I talk about the humidity in Florida. If, if the, if, my anhydrous sample sucked in more water from the time I, it was cooling to the time I got it in the balance. That would have made the anhydrous weight larger than it should have been. When I subtracted it from the hydrate weight, that would have made my mass of water lower than it should have been. And in, my, in this particular case, that could very well be why my result was lower than it was. And I did not do a percent error, but that's already been explained. Good enough, Max? Yeah, that's very helpful. So when you're doing the procedures, I don't want to see my procedures back. I want to see you write these in your own, in your own words. So we're really not following the lab manual too much. I'm not understanding. There's a lab manual with all the experiments that we do. Uh, go to course content. Okay. So that's what I did with the last one. I just follow, scroll down or up, I guess. Uh, sometimes he puts them in there. Sometimes he does. Yeah, lab manual right there at the top. Yeah, left. yeah, yeah. And scroll up. Yeah, and this this is what I followed for the last lab notebook because I didn't know <clears throat> I forgot about that. Um, that thing you just showed me about the exemplary lab notebook, but I just followed this to a T. And what I mark you off on? 
I don't know. I just submitted it. I don't have a grade back yet. So. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm curious as to why you said that it, that that we're not following the lab manual because that's where I got this stuff. Yeah, but you didn't like, when you just showed me all that stuff, you never once referenced the lab manual, so. Reference the lab manual, in what, in what context? That was the thing you were just on. I, I followed that the whole entire time. Okay. So I guess to that, are we, when it comes to like post lab questions and stuff like that, are we writing that in our lab notebook as well? You don't have to. Sometimes they're gonna help you answer the questions Sometimes they'll help you answer, Charlie, the post lab questions. Why is this not popping up? So then if we have- Sorry guys, I got, I've got to go. I got to take this because I'm doing a test. Next. Sorry, my wife got it. Okay, Max. Oh, I forgot the sign, whoops. All right. This is your notebook. Can you see this? Yeah. Okay, if you're gonna see this. Did I even grade this, Max? I didn't grade it. No, I submitted it yesterday, so. Well, Max, when was it due? Yesterday. Was it due yesterday? Okay, then I I didn't I haven't graded this one yet. I know that. I'm just I, I didn't expect you to grade it. I was just I'm asking, sorry. like okay. Uh back to folder submissions. But I was just explaining that I went to that lab manual link and I just followed it step by step with all the data tables and all the questions that it asked and everything. Like there was um after you did all the calculations stuff, there was like five post lab questions and I had a question on one of them. Was it number five? Yeah, I could not figure out the conversion. Like I got to pounds per cubic centimeters, but I couldn't figure out how to get from cubic centimeters to cubic yards. Same, but I'm assuming since we don't have to answer them that that wasn't relevant to our score. Yeah, that, that's what I'm wondering now is like, are we following the lab manual or not? Because there was questions in there that said like, you know, if you didn't show your work, you wouldn't get any points for it. And I didn't know how to show my work for it. Okay, we'll do, let's deal with one thing at a time here, okay? Let's deal with the notebook. And then we'll deal with question five in a second. It okay? would actually be easier if you just went to the lab manual. Why is this not popping up? Oh, I think I might have downloaded at the bottom left. There we go. Okay, Max, this is the one. This is the notebook. I believe if you go in and reopen it, Max, you can come in here and see Comments, okay? Max? Yeah, no, I understand. I understand this. I just wanna know, can you go back to the lab manual just for a second? Okay. Uh, maybe I can. Uh, back to folder submissions. Okay. There's content. Okay, for which one? The which? density one. Okay, I'm in the density one. All right, so scroll down to like page 12.
or I guess are like, we in the post lab questions? Almost. Is that what we're talking about? Post lab questions? Yeah, these ones right here. Okay. You don't have to do these. I never told you you had to do these. I know. Like, so we're not referring to this lab menu at all. We're just yes, using. You are. Yes, you are. <laughs> You're referring to it because. Well, this is part of the lab, man. This is part of the, the post lab thing. So what, I just didn't understand why. Why I'm not doing it? Yeah. I don't want to do it. I'm not saying I want to do it if I don't have to, but. I, I, you see, what I'm trying to, trying to comprehend from this is I'm telling you not to do one part of it. And, so, and you're saying you're not using it at all. That's what I'm hearing. I know, but when I just went over the lab notebook with you, like you never, like, I don't know, referred to this. So I, I never just... referred to the post lab questions. No, to this, this lab, this PDF file right here. I, I'm, Max, Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Or am I just, am I not getting it? We're having a communication problem here. Yeah, I understand that. I feel uh, like to look at the procedures and to look at the reported data and the data tables that we need, we have to look at the lab manual. Okay. But you also, it also gives you theory. This gives you theory be before I give it, before I talk to you. Okay. This gives you this whole part, this whole introduction part, this whole introduction part gives you the theory and you're supposed to use that to do your pre-lab with. You're supposed to read through this, all this crap, down to experimental procedure. That you're using the lab manual to prepare yourself for doing the pre-lab. Then, yes, we're under, we're, yes, Max, we're in unusual circumstances. You're not actually doing the lab. If you were doing the lab, you would be following this procedure with some exceptions that I would have to say when I would be giving my lecture at the beginning of the class. Okay, Max? Max, okay. you there? Does, yep. that make, does that make sense to you? Yes. But you're not actually doing this. All right? We have to fake like you're doing it because you have to prepare a notebook for me. So you have to use this section to prepare your procedures. Okay, we good there? Yep. All right, so we've been through the procedures. Now we're getting down to the data table. You can use this data table or you can prepare your own. I don't care which one it is, as long as all the information is in the data table, I don't care. The difference here is I separate data and calculations into two separate sections. I find it less confusing to do that. So you can print this out and write the numbers in here and paste it into your notebook, or you can hand write it and, pay, and just hand write it into your notebook. You have the choice. But the bottom line is if you use this one, it has to be somehow put permanently into the notebook. So I have a question about the, okay. So for example, the, um, the graph and the percent error were in the post lab question. So I just wrote out the I made, questions. Charlie, I made a note of that last, last week. I made okay. a note that you were going to be required to do the graph. Yeah. And you normally will not have anything. The post lab normally will not be part of the results section. Okay. Okay. So if I included it in the post lab, but it's still in there in my lab notebook, it's just under the post lab section under number three. Okay. Did you, did you upload it into the results section? Yes. Okay. Then you should be fine. Okay. And then like, for example, and you mentioned in the conclusion part is where the percent error is located. Um, but it asked for that in the post lab and number four. So I just wrote it under post lab number four. You actually did the, you actually did the post labs and included them in your notebook. Yeah. 
Okay. I want that after your conclusion. Okay. Okay. So all I right? put all of it before my conclusion. And I would, I would prefer having you, you put this in my mind. Hopefully I'll remember it when I go and grade the notebooks. If I don't bring it to my attention. Okay. That you have included it in the notebook, but you just included it in the post lab. From now on, I want it in the conclusion, whether it's in the post lab or not. Okay. The okay. post labs, you do not have to do the post labs. It may be beneficial to you because it, unless I, this particular experiment, yes, there were sections that I did tell you you had to do. As a matter of fact, I don't think I told you to do a percent error for last week, did I? I just told you about the graph. All right. Yeah, I was confused. So you're going to see a weird screenshot that I took for again, my post lab. Again, I, I, if you include extra stuff, that's fine. I don't care that you're doing the post lab. If you think that's going to help you for the final, and if you think that having it there with you, remember, you can use your notebooks in the final. If you think that's going to help you, then by all means, do it. It's not going to hurt you. I was just curious if we were going to get marked off specifically for that, but I know not to do it going forward now. Okay. Unless I want to. Unless you want to. Uh, I don't know if any, I did not get that one, but. No, like I said, I got pounds for cubic centimeters, but I couldn't figure out how to get from cubic centimeters to the cubic yard. Okay. And I, I cheated, so I looked online and I was like, <laughs> well, no, like I just want to know the conversion, but like I didn't, it didn't show the actual dimensional analysis from going from cubic centimeters to cubic yards. It just showed, all right, well, if you multiply this or divide it by 16, 1600 or something like that, you'll get the, so right. I, I knew, I knew what you were supposed to get, but I didn't know how to get there. Okay. It was just shy of a ton. I think it was like one point, it was like 0.8 something tons. Okay. You have one, where's Y? Cubic yard, how? What happened? Should be good now. Uh, yeah, but, uh, uh, Dudley and Saki. I'm sorry, Max. Dudley, Dudley and Saki. I don't think they're here. Yes. I All thought right. I Devin. Sorry. You're marked absent. Okay. It's fine. I, I'm sorry, but, uh, basically it's 11 o'clock. The class began at 930. I thought you emailed to us like it, it will start at 11, though. No. 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 Nope. Okay, it's my fault. It's okay. All right. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> Just 9:30 is the time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, look at the recording. Okay, Max. You have one yard. Okay. Right, Mac, Max. Yep. All right. You also given, I think it's set point nine nine eight grams per milliliter, right? Right. Those are the two things you're given. You want to know how many tons, okay? Right. So you have to turn one cubic yard into milliliters. Yeah, I know. All right. So the way you're going to do that, you also know one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. If you didn't know that, that's something that you have to know, okay? Yeah, no, I knew that. So we have yard cubed times 36 
inches per yard. Has this canceled out all the cubes of the yard? No. It's canceled out one of them. So I got to do this three times. This will give me inches cubed. We good there, Max? Okay, so you just do, so you could do like 36 times 36 times 36 over cubic yards. Yes. Yeah. So that's, so this gives me 4,656 inches cubed. Okay. Now I got to do this. But again, I got to do this. This is going to give me cubic centimeters. So I get from this, I get seven, six, four, five, five, four, point eight, five, eight. Yeah, I know I'm going crazy here. Cubic centimeters, right? Times yeah. 0.998 grams per milliliter. Seventy six. I'm going to cut some figures out. Three zero. Okay. I got to go from here times four fifty three point five grams. One pound per four fifty three point five grams. This gives me 1,682 pounds, 1,682 times one ton divided by 2,000 equals 0 0.841, three tons. Okay, Max? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so that's how you do that particular problem. The key is, and this is the part that screws, screws with you guys the most. When you're cubing something, you got to do it three times. If you were squaring it, you got to do it twice. Okay, anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, I think last week you emailed us that uh, the class we pushed to 11. Like uh, last week, because you okay, said you I'm have, not marking uh, every, anybody off. Why the hell did I do that? Because you said you have like a uh, hospital thing. Like, yeah. Oh, maybe I missed something this morning. Like I was expecting to be pushed to 11 as well. So I was, I wouldn't have even hopped in if I wasn't trying to do all this school. Okay, work. Saki and Doodly, I apologize. I apologize I'm to sorry. you. Okay. Obviously you are here. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. My head's halfway. Not here. Uh, Saki, just, Saki and Doodly, just uh, the talk. Well, this is a very easy lab. Yeah. The thing is recorded, okay? Okay. Thank you.
Do you have any questions, Dudley or Saki? Any questions about anything? Uh, not this section, I believe. But um, I got uh, last, the first notebook, I got very low percentage at the notebook. Is that okay. like possible to make up or something? Yeah, I told you guys, I, I told everybody earlier. Okay. And uh, basically, show me you can do a notebook. Okay. Show me you can do a notebook. And what I'm going to do is all the grades previous to that notebook mm. are all going to be brought up to a nine. Okay. All right. So this fix Then from then on, mm -hmm. it depends upon, you've shown me you, you know how to do a notebook. You mm -hmm. got to show me you can keep it up. Okay. That makes Fair sense. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, Saki, do you know how to look at my comments? Yes, I know. Okay. You're able to do that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Doodly, anything? I was about to ask. I apologize to you. I don't know where I was thinking, what I was thinking. Maybe I was thinking that this was on Tuesday. I don't know. I don't know. What, what uh, question, Doodley? No, that's good. I was about to ask the same question as well, but she already asked. Yeah, you got, I marked everybody present here today. Oh, okay. Somebody wasn't here. That's my fault. That's on me. Oh, thank you, Robin. Uh, again, Doodley, uh, Saki, go to the recording. It'll be uploaded soon. Anybody have anything else, guys? Yeah. Um, for anyone that was late, uh, Saki or Doodley, um, or anyone that didn't see the chat, I posted a link to Discord for a, uh, you know, for us to talk and discuss anything we may be confused on or just want to talk in general. Um, if you don't know what Discord is, it's a free app. It's kind of like Skype. Um, you can make a free account and uh, I posted it in the chat if you guys want to join the server. Actually, I want to join, but I can't see the chat because I just right now. So if you can post it right now, is that? You have to repost it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I got it. No problem. Okay. Here's another thing, guys. If you go in here, if I haven't done it, I will set it up. There should be a discussion forum in here. If there's not, I will set it up. Okay. I can do this as well, guys. Does that not? Okay, somebody's already accessed it somehow. Aditya has already accessed it. So it's in here somewhere. There is a discussion forum in here. And I just don't know where it's at right now. Go back to communicate. Forum. Go all the way down to forum, guys. And if you go to forum, click on student forum. And you literally can go in here and Click on it and reply to thread. Post. So it's Max, that's great. If you if you want to get everybody off, off lab site, that's great. But there is a discussion forum within the course as well.
Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you very much, Max. Yeah, no problem. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Getting to the point where I'm going to run out of time anyway. So if nobody has anything, I motion that we adjourn for today. Okay. Wait, wait. Uh, I just want to make sure on the record, did you remember any appointments that you made? Doctor's appointments? Yeah. I, Tim, I don't know. I don't know why I told you 11 o'clock. Because I think last week you said that you have a surgery coming up. I'm not sure yeah. if it's don't this miss your ah, that's what I did. Yeah. Oh. So I just want to make sure that you have everything like that's what it unchecked. is. It's next week. I may have been warning you forward. The eleventh. Oh, okay. The eleventh. I have a surgeon appointment with the surgeon. Okay. Oh, I thought it said the fourth on the thing. It may have said the fourth, but it's next week. This okay. Is, so next week we are pushing out week, at eleven o'clock. Next week, eleven o'clock. Okay. Okay, got you. So I am sorry about that. That's what happened. If I mistook the date, that's my fault. That's on me. So good. Okay, I will see you later, guys. It is the eleventh. We're next week. We're meeting at eleven o'clock. Gotcha. Eleventh at eleven. Got it. All right. Take care, guys. Okay, bye. All right. Thank I you like too. to wait. I like to wait and make sure that nobody wants to speak to me privately here. So, guys, <laughs> click off if you're done. Okay. Right. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you.